today I want to touch on the subject of faith and how faith can be increased through love. We've been meditating on the subject of faith and we were looking into how to grow in faith. Bible says in Romans 1.17 that just shall live by faith. And in 1 John 5.4 it says that faith is the one that overcomes the world. That is the victory that overcomes the world. So in this life when we are living, there are many things that we have to overcome. You have to, you have to face, you have to, there are many challenges that comes in our life and you have to overcome in this life. So for all these things you need faith. So the first verse it said, live by faith. And then the second verse here it says, overcome by faith. So if we put together, for you to have an overcoming life, you have to have faith. So life is full of challenges, decision makings, temptations, many struggles, many oppositions. But God says, it is I who can help you to overcome. It is easy to start our life in faith with God. But then when the life throws all the, all the wrong things at us, we can become quickly shaken in faith. If you see the life of the disciples, they had stumbling in different points of their lives, even though Jesus was with them. Judas was with Jesus and did great signs and wonders and mighty miracles along with Jesus, stumbled. How did he lost his faith in God? If you read Matthew 13, 10 and 11, Matthew 13, 10 and 11, it says that, why do you speak to them in this, uh, parables? The disciples asked him. He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. If you see the way that Adam and Eve fell, they fell for something they wanted to know. Right? They wanted to know the, uh, the knowledge of good and evil, which is a mysterious thing that they didn't know, that they were not having any clue of. But they, they were able to sell their relationship with God for getting the understanding of knowledge of good and evil. They were considering that to be so precious that they were able to trade their love and relationship with God for getting something that they did not know, which is a mysterious thing. Here we see that Jesus is coming forth to reveal that mystery to his disciples. Right? He said, he answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, which means there are things in the spirit realm which are not available, that knowledge, that mystery is not available in the natural realm. Somebody has to reveal in the, in the spirit. So earlier, Satan was able to reveal that and here God himself is coming forth to reveal that mystery to his own disciples. So the disciples would have been so excited that the master is revealing something personal to us. It is not revealed to everybody. The master is willing to reveal something very close to us and very personal to us. Just think of in your workplace, somebody who knows the insights of company secrets, right? There are trade secrets that are kept in certain walls. Then no, it's not revealed to everybody, right? You, you see how Coca-Cola makes their drink, that trade secret is kept in a secret vault. Nobody knows how they are making that mixture, right? Because it's a secret, it's a mysterious thing, because if it is known, everybody will start making the same thing. The taste, everything will come to know and they will lose the business. So think of somebody who are higher up in your company revealing the trade secret to you, right? How much you will feel special, how much you feel that Wow, oh, it's not known to anybody else, he's, he's showing to me, he's revealing that to me, how much you would feel special about it. So, in the same way, there are secrets that are there in heaven and God and Jesus was opening up about the secret to disciples. You know, Hitler was trying to identify the Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant was lost, right? Nobody knows where it is right now. <coughs> Hitler was trying to get that because if you know about it, if you get it, you will get something supernatural power, right? There are things in this world, people are always trying to look to the spirit 
the spirit realm to become big, both good and bad. Right? They wanted to know something mysterious so that they can be powerful. Think of Jesus coming and revealing, he knows everything. Right? He has the knowledge of everything in the universe. He is trying to reveal a secret to the disciples. And Judas was one among the disciples. The master was willing to reveal that to Judas. But how Judas fell along the way, how he became, when, when, when you know that somebody is revealing something very precious to you, you should be more and more loyal to them, right? More and more faithful to them. How Judas fell along the way. The reason that Judas fell from following Jesus and fell from faith is because he did not grow in love. He just was always looking for something he can get from Jesus. He was not growing in the love relationship with God and because of which what happened at a certain point came in his life that he said, okay, I'm done with Jesus now. I can go away with whatever that Jesus has given. I can live with that and I can betray Jesus. Right? Many people come. They see a miracle. They see his love. They see his goodness. But then are they able to finish the race till the end? In the uh, Continuing in that love relationship? No. Many people pass away from faith. Yeah, uh, in, the, in the life of Peter, Peter had a great experience with Jesus. In Luke 5.5, 5, we see that Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night, caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. And in the next verse, we see that they, uh, they came and filled both the boats and they began to sing. The, even, along with the boat, they were beginning to sing because of so much catch they had uh, on that day at the word of Jesus. But the same Peter who saw this mighty miracle, when he is a fisherman, he knows the season of the fish, he knows the timing of the fish, he knows which plot of the ocean he need to get the fish. He, with all this knowledge, he was not able to get the fish on that day. But Jesus said the word and he believed the word of the master and he was able to get the great uh, number of fish. But the same Peter, when, it, when he was seeing the wind, the boisterous wind, he beginning he began to sink in the water. Amen. In Matthew 14, 31, he says, Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Right? So his faith was not that much grown for him to continue to walk in the water. He began sinking. So his little faith was not able to save him. Jesus said, you of little faith, the little faith that he had was not able to save him in a tough situation. And the same Peter denied Jesus three times to the servant girl. The faith that he had on Jesus to catch a great number of fish, even though he had knowledge of how to do the fishing, right? The same level of faith that he had in Jesus was not able to help him during the different situations again encountering with Jesus right Jesus is already there Jesus is is uh, is walking on the water there he was not able to continue to keep his sight toward Jesus in the, in the time when Jesus was telling that I'm going to be crucified and the Romans are going to catch me and they're going to crucify me and during that time he left everything and then ran away right so why his faith was not working in the life of Peter. We see Judas fell in one way, Peter also fell in another way. They all both stumbled in faith. Today also we in the same situations, right? In one love, in one situation we show tremendous faith in God. In the in a different situation we we try to save ourselves. Right? We completely ignore God's faithfulness and we see that oh this situation is too much for me right probably God is not able to help me God will not be able to help me and then we run away we also do the same thing like Judas and Peter see this in the world that we are living in there are so many things that can come against us to overcome us but God is saying that you have to overcome it through your faith 
So how to have that level of faith that, that we are constantly we become overcomers? The one of the way that you can grow in faith is you have your love towards God through God's word. And the next is that your faith grows by loving God. If you read Galatians 5, 6, it says faith working through love. The faith which is working, it is a faith without works is dead, right? Faith without works is dead. But the faith can continuously work in your life through love. Amen. If we are not growing in the love towards God, not growing toward the, uh, in, the, in the knowledge of God, you will not be able to grow in faith. When we see in the life of John, the, the disciple who's, who boasts himself about his love towards Jesus. John had a great assurance of his love, love towards God and God's love towards him. The, the, all the disciples, Bible says that all the disciples forsook Jesus when the Romans came and captured Jesus. Which means that for all the disciples, the faith that they had and the trust that they had in Jesus vanished quickly when a difficult situation came. But there was only one disciple who was with Jesus when he was hanging on the cross. Amen. Nobody else was there. John was there uh, near the cross and when Jesus was hanging on the cross, Jesus committed his mother into the hands of John. Jesus hanging on the cross, there will be a terror where like if anybody of his disciples are there, they would have a terror that if we get caught, we will also be hanging on the cross. Right? That's a natural thing of a human being. Right? There are two other people are there, probably they are going to kill us also. But what made John to be so strong that he was near the cross? And why he did not run away from that place? Here, the, the love is inversely proportional to the distance. More love he had, he came very clear, near to Jesus on the cross. Peter would have been in at least one kilometer. His love was not that much. Other disciples, not even in the village. Let's, let's escape this village for some time. Right? Let's hear the news tomorrow. Let's escape this village. So, when your love is more, you come more near to God. So, how much love you have on God that much you will have faith on them. That's why any situation comes in life, you will not be shaken because you know that God loves you. All things are working together for good for those who love the Lord. You have to know that the love that I carry in my heart towards God will be able to protect me even though the situation is looking bleak and tough. I don't care. God is the one who is going to make me escape. God is the one who is going to protect me. You will have a greater assurance that God will not leave me. Amen. So it is based on your love towards God. I and my wife are talking about our children, about their future. Every day technology is changing so much. Right? Every day, like you cannot, one year before things are outdated now. So for them, we have to plan probably after 10 years, 15 years, when they grow up. We don't even know what would be there. Whatever they are studying now, they, that might not be there completely during that time. Now they are talking about AI, hey, will take the jobs and all these things were going on. Now, when, we are, when you just think like that, you will be, your future is hopeless. You're, you don't know what, what you will do at that time, right? Probably whatever they are reading now is completely gone and I, whether they will have a job or what or what they will do, you are hopeless. But then, we have one assurance in our heart, the God who brought us this much far will be able to take us even in that situation. We don't need to be worried about those things. The God who is faithful in our lives and He is so loving and faithful in our lives, He is able to take care of that situation at that time. I don't need to be worried about it now and then think about oh, whether it will happen or it will not happen. I don't need to be worried. The God who brought me this much far is able to take my children also that much far in the time when they are going to live and they are going to face the world fully independently. 
when you have that kind of a mindset what happens to you now what happens to you now you will have peace you will have rest you will not be anxious no will take it if we plan everything that is to happen right now god brought many things into our life without even our knowledge he will take it god is control of the entire universe entire world he will take it when you have that assurance how that faith is coming that faith came because you have love towards god and and you know that god is faithful and he loves us and he will take care during the time so i told my wife that we should not do or take decisions for our children like the way the world is taking decisions we should be different we should not be running a rat race like the way the world runs amen we should have faith and trust in god and whatever the best that we could do we will do amen and our focus mainly should be that they should be godly they should know the lord if they know the lord god will take care of them god will have a plan for them god will take care of them do not take them away from the environment of godliness and think that oh their their studies is the one that is going to take them higher their their talent is the one that is going to take higher no it is not for us it is not the cup of tea for us we have to be godly we have to make our children to grow in faith in the lord in the love towards god and when the time comes god knows what to do in their life and he will lift them up this is our this should be our goal this should be the like mindset of every believer we should not be like chicken without head running here and there like the way in the world runs no there is a difference the way that we should do and, and take care of our family we need to have such an assurance in our love relationship with god that no situations in life no situations in life should shake that love relationship don't bring your past mistakes don't bring your uh, failures don't bring what you have done wrong even between your love relationship with god when you are coming for worship forget about even the mistakes that you have done worship the lord saying that lord i have done the mistake but i don't want this to come in between of us right now i want to love you i want to worship you and i want to not have anything as a hindrance between you and me when you are when you are when you are coming into the love relationship with god that's when the enemy will try to put more guilt in you right you did this you did that what you are raising your hands you are worshiping don't allow the enemy to torment your mind the enemy or even your own self should not come between you and god when i'm telling you the only way you will overcome faithlessness and and all the hindrances is by coming near to god if you are going to think that you are going to become perfect and you will come to god you will never come near to god i am telling you you will never come near to god when you have to come near to god you have to forget about everything lord i am coming how i am and the way that i am going to become perfect is by you it is your love relationship towards me and my love relationship towards you is what is going to make me perfect it is not my perfection it is going to make perfect never fall into the trap of the enemy of guilt and condemnation to come between your relationship with god these are the things that will make you to trust god more how you will overcome by faith in this world when tough situation comes how you will you will still follow god like 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 john right he was he was he know who god is who jesus is and his love towards him and his love towards him right towards jesus and he was so assured of that that he forgot about the romans he forgot about the all the uh, all the uh, the crooked people the pharisees they might condemn him the, he forgot about the jews he was it was like he was in a different world altogether when he was with jesus he was not minding anything nothing was oppressing his mind to be careful hey, let's be careful here let's probably hide behind a tree nothing he was he was completely what to say like unaware of whatever that was around him and brought that brought him near to jesus and and love him you need to have a great 
thoughts to, towards God. You need to have high opinion about God. He's full of love, he's full of mercy, he's full of grace, he's full of justice, he's full of wisdom. You, you need to have a great admiration towards God. He, he's, he's great, he's, he's love, he's full of love. And I cannot think of separating myself from him. From such a source of love and power and glory and wisdom and, and mercy and grace and faithfulness. From such a source, how I can take myself away? You need to have such a high opinion about God. We see in, 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 in one of the uh, incident in Luke 7.38. Yeah, from 37 and 38. Here a woman who was coming into a Pharisee's house where it's a very uncomfortable place for the woman. It's a very uncomfortable place. Like you cannot come near wolves. Right? It's like a lamb coming near wolves. It's, a, it's like a, such an uncom un uncomfortable place for that woman. Her love toward Jesus was so much that she did, she forgot about the wolves, like the way, like the way John forgot about the Romans, right? He do, doesn't even know all I need is Jesus. He is there. I need to be there, right? The same way for this woman also, she forgot about it is a Pharisee's house. So many people are there. What kind of woman I am? She forgot about all those things. She saw Jesus. I need to go near her. That's it. That's my goal. And she came near to Jesus, she anointed him, and then she kissed his feet, and then she was showing and pouring out her love towards Jesus. Today we, we are becoming very decent people. We need to, this is how I need to do, this is how I need to worship. I cannot raise my hand, I cannot sing loud, I cannot ex express my emotions. We are very, we have become very dignified, decent people before Jesus before God. That's not going to work. When a, when a situation comes, we will we'll know your faith. Right? When the situation comes, you, you are showing yourself so dignified and so decent. When the, when the dynamic situation, the dynamo comes, all the decency will go. Right? We, we have to see, we have to learn so many things from this woman. We have to see and learn so much from the life of John. They were, in, in, in English it is called as oblivion, which means that total forgetfulness. They forgot what's happening. I, I forgot everything. Jesus is what is, I am seeing. I am forgetting about everything. I am seeing only Jesus. Total forgetfulness is called oblivion. Unless you come to such level, in your relationship with God, I am telling you, you will shake. You will shake, you will shake, the enemy will shake you so, he will sift you, he will shake you, he will do everything if you are not coming to that kind of a total forgetfulness about the world and looking at the Jesus alone. See, I am giving you very important steps of how to be successful in life. How to be, how to be worry free in life. How to be joyful in life. I am giving you very simple steps. Amen. Walk on what may, whatever storm comes. When we keep our eyes on Jesus, we are forgetting about everything. That is what happened to Peter, right? He was looking at Jesus. He forgot about the storm. But then when he took his eyes away from Jesus and looked into the storm, he started sinking. What a testimony it would have been if he had walked completely on the water. What a testimony it would have been. That is a great victorious situation, right? But when we not looking at to Jesus, we are looking into everything else, we sink. But then when we forget about all the situations and we look to Jesus, like the way John looked to Jesus, like the way uh, uh, the woman looked to Jesus, when we do that, we will have victories in life. That's why Jesus said, Oh, you have little faith. He had some faith to walk in water, looking into Jesus, and then suddenly changed his 
looks. Amen. He had little faith. And then God is saying us to us that you continuously set your eyes upon me. Do not look into anything else. When you are able to set your eyes upon me, when you are able to love me, then you will have great faith. You will be able to grow in your faith continuously. Do not look at the situation around you. When we are able to set our focus on Christ, we will have an absolute faith upon him that we will have a total dependence on him. Otherwise, what will happen? For some things, we will keep our faith in God. For other things, we will keep faith on people, many other things around us. Okay, I, I need to park my faith here. I need to park my little faith on God. I need to park little faith on hospital. I need to park little faith on doctors. All these things will start happening. Amen. God is saying, put your absolute faith in me. That is the faith will make you overcome. If you start believing in the people, in the hospital and other things, one day they will sink, make you sink. We will go and say, Lord, help me. Then we will put our full faith on God. Then. Right? Let's not come into that situation. After Jesus uh, was crucified, all the disciples went about their business. Okay, let's let's get back to our business. Okay, our time period with Jesus is over. Three and a half years, we had good time. He's gone now. Let's get back to our business. Right? Peter all went, went back to their business. And when Jesus rose again and came to Peter in John 21.15. John 21.15. Jesus is bringing him to a point that earlier you believed or you try to escape from the servant woman. You did not set your focus on me. Earlier, you put your focus on the storm. You did not focus on me. Now, you are trying to put the focus on fishing. Do you love me more than all these? Because when we are, when we are not putting our focus on Christ, all other things are becoming a fearful thing. The servant woman is becoming a fearful thing. Right? Oh, this job is so precious because of my my day to day things come from this. So you give honor to it. Right? The storm is so threatening, life threatening. So I need to honor it. So what is happening is your fear and honor goes to everything else and you are, it is almost like you are loving, you are becoming a slave to it. But then God is saying, are you Putting all those aside and do you love me more than all of these? All of these. Today Jesus is asking us, do you love me more than all of these? You want to become an overcomer in life? You want to stay in faith? You want to continuously be in victory? Do you love me more than all of these? Jesus is asking us. And we have to answer God. We have to, if you are sincere, you have to answer God and say, Lord, I love you. I love you more than all of this. Let our faith work through love. Let us grow in love towards God. Let us understand His love and faithfulness towards us. And let our faith work through love. Only then you will be able to overcome big challenges, big situations in life. If our love is not matured, if our love is not perfect towards God, that we put him first in everything in our life and we love him, then we will not be able to grow continuously in faith. So today, God is challenging us. Love me, put me first in your life and set your focus on me alone.